I can confidently say everyone here today, growing up at one point or another, have disappointed their parents. Maybe it was something as trivial as getting a C on your report card and for not meeting their expectations of the perfect A student. We held on to that guilt. Our factory settings have been installed growing up and we are programmed to do our duties, to perform well and well, to be obedient. All these settings become a significant part of the mold that shapes us into who we become today based on what the parent has believed as social parameters. And get this, parents create an image of what an ideal child looks like, and even before the child is born. Then that parent becomes a parent and start to think, my parents raised me this way and I turned out okay. This must be the best form of parenting style, right? Have we have ever as parents, stop to think if these shortcomings and limiting beliefs hold our children back from their full potential? And, well, the question still stands true. Are we truly equipped to raise our children in the way we have been raised? Maybe not. And here's why. I will be using my Asian roots as a good representation. I come from a well-respected Taiwanese family. My parents' traditional Asian view could be seen in the way chores were divided in our homes. At home, the chores were divided and molded to the gender binary. My brother would mow the lawn and I would wash the dishes. The duty for the males in the family, which is considered the harder work, was always different from the duties of the females, which is considered the easier work. My parents also had a very intergenerational view of parenting. By definition, good kid and bad kid were very black and white. Growing up, I was a good kid. I was obedient. I had high scores. And this brought pride to the family. My daily roster was tightly regulated. And I use the word roster because it honestly felt that way. I had piano lessons, math lessons, English tutoring, figure skating, and more, more, more. I felt like an automated doll, being controlled by a remote at all times. My brain produced good results, not because it was smart, but because it was programmed to do so. And this made me feel ironically dense. All these activities, were designed to make us smarter, to perform better, because in the end, we are valued by our achievements, and love and recognition are dependent on how well we perform and how much pride we bring to the family. And it's no shocker that this leads to lower self-worth, dissatisfaction, and a pursuit of more, more, more. When I turned 12, my parents decided I was old enough to make decisions for the first time. As a start, I was given the option of choosing what I wanted from my extracurricular courses. In their disbelief, I dropped everything. The piano practice, the math lessons, the English tutoring, everything. We must understand, programming and controlling a child for so long then one day letting go of that dial can be jarring. And often, even the child does not grasp that implication. I now finally had the luxury of freedom, though I quickly slipped and went from the good kid to the bad kid. As my parents started losing authority, they became more authoritarian. The more pressure my parents put on, the more I resisted. Things took a steep bend when I got into high school. I got mixed up with the wrong crowd. I skipped school, I drank at an early age, and I snuck out thinking it was cool. According to Dr. Gabor Matei, a Hungarian-Canadian physician, 
authoritarian parents come at the expense of an absent nurturing adult. And as a result, the child will fill that void in their peer group. Now that kid becomes far more attached to this wrong crowd than what is actually healthy for them. Their peers become their mentors and their templates of how to be, how to walk, and how to talk. As I got older, it only got worse. I failed a lot of courses in university and almost got kicked out. And instead of holding myself accountable, I played the blame game. I blamed everyone and everything except for the true culprit, me. Nevertheless, I uh, eventually graduated to gain recognition from my parents and fulfill their need for external validation from others and society. However, internally, I had hit rock bottom. A traditional Asian parent's selflessness when it comes to their children cannot be matched. They unselfishly give everything within their means to their children, providing them with the best knowledge, best experiences, best things they can afford. Striving to ensure that their children get the opportunity to leave the lives they themselves could not have dreamt of. And that is in fact how they show their love. This situation is made even worse by the intergenerational culture of silence within Asian families. What that means is there is a lack of open and honest communication between parents and children. And sadly, these children grow up not being able to openly discuss their feelings with their parents. This then, in fact, teaches a child self-suppression instead of self-regulation, which is crucial later in life as I need to learn how to cope and manage stress. While self-sacrificing and in their generosity, they don't realize that their expectation of more and expectation of external validation molds the child into what they want to see, but not who the child truly is. The children become like a vase. They're stunning but they're incapable of any utility. The beautiful designs arm the child with what they see as necessary to survive and thrive in the world. Smile, have manners, be liked, but never let others see your weakness. These children become followers who avoid risk, who are 100% dependent on the validation of others. And I can say that with authority because that was once me. Insecure, incapable of self-expression and a stranger to myself. A string of difficulties, challenges and events which can be likened to a little snowball rolling down a hill. Increasing in size and gaining momentum it eventually got to a point where my anxiety was at an all-time high. I was depressed and even more of a stranger to myself than ever. I realized that I could not recognize myself because my mold was the opposite of my true self. I am curious, creative, and I thrive by living outside the box, but I was molded not to take risks. I never strayed outside my comfort zone. I am open-minded, opinionated, but I couldn't find a way of self-expression. Stephen Covey talked about the seven habits of highly effective people where he asked that the readers, and I am paraphrasing, step out of their body and look at themselves and try to understand their emotions. At that moment, I could not even recognize the person I was looking at, much less know her emotions. I realized that I had to change. I had to take charge of my life, and I had to take responsibility for myself, truly. So I stopped avoiding the emptiness, and I started gathering up the pieces. 
Instead of looking at the stranger I was, I decided to understand her so I could lead her on the correct path. I became obsessed with dissecting my early childhood and Lad made me realize some truths. My parents did the best they could based on their knowledge and resources. I was a loved and lucky child given the circumstances. They were just programmed to the intergenerational style of parenting and I was determined to be different. The more I dissected my childhood, the more I realized that I had to take responsibility for myself and my mold. Shaping and sculpting the broken vase into a true mold, and not just the shattered pieces, but all the other bits I picked up along the way. The journey of identifying myself was a laborious one and the most impactful journey of my life. And through it, I became a proponent of early childhood education. According to Dr. Gabor Mate, he said, we may not be responsible for the world that had created our minds, but we can take responsibility for the mind in which we create our world. We all want our children to be happy, and I am confident this is valid now as it has been since the beginning of life. But fitting your child into a mold that you cast based on your experiences never has and will never be the answer. Parents naturally want to keep their child on a four-wheel bicycle, never taking off their training wheels to keep them safe. And as a mother to a beautiful baby girl, I can relate also. But I can also see she can only indeed be happy if I give her the space to be herself, to be independent, to have an identity, and to fulfill her full potential. The greatest gift I can give her is the confidence to choose her own happiness. There are a few things we need to understand and always keep as default in our minds. One, stop intergenerational parenting. Children are beings with agency, autonomy, and abilities. They will find their way of independence and self-expression to navigate in their own generation. Two, too many adults demand respect from kids without showing respect in return. Parenting and respect is in a one-way instructional lesson or speaking over our children. We learn about our children as they learn from us. It is a constant observation, listening, and tuning into their needs. And three, parenting isn't about fitting them into a mold. It's about helping them create and find their mold, allowing them to break and remold it as many times as they like. In summary, there isn't a black and white version of good kid or bad kid by definition. And frankly, I hope you throw it out of your dictionary altogether. It can be likened to the spotlight effect where we think everyone has their attention on us and what we do, while in reality, everybody is focused on their own lives. Every kid is unique and perfect in their own special way. And as an advocate, I combine my early childhood education, personal breakthroughs, and what I continue to learn as a parent to hopefully encourage parents, educators, and mentors sitting here today to provide a nurturing and supportive environment for all children an environment that allows them to blossom into their beautiful and independent true self. Let's help our future sculpt themselves into the unique and authentic creation that they can be to ensure we finally fulfill our greatest desire, and that is to truly raise happier children for the next generation. Thank you.